Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now that we have the oil pan on 1113's new engine, we're going to move on to some of the front end components, those being radiator support and front crankshaft pulley. Now I didn't get any negative feedback about my uh, service bulletin manual last time, so we're going to bounce off of that, ricochet off the parts manual, and then learn why 1113's original crankshaft pulley is actually kind of cool. Quick rundown here, crank pulley, pretty much standard uh, double V-belt style. One of the uh, V's is for the water pump belt, the other one would be for the optional generator. 1113 does not have a generator, but I, I like cleaning those up anyway. Um, if you put a new belt on a rusty uh, surface, it's going to accelerate the wear factor exponentially. Um, tapered fit on the crankshaft, keyed on, and retained by this claw bolt. Now. Uh, they have these little claws on here for uh, inserting a tool through the front of the radiator and barring the engine over. Not so much for starting, but just for manually uh, manually turning this over, doing checks, uh, adjustments, things like that. So your claw bolt will hold the pulley onto the front of the crankshaft, and then we have this flat plate, which acts like a lock. So basically, you find however it best aligns with any one of the six threaded holes that are in the crank pulley and then these two bolts thread into two of those holes locks that in position nothing can move so what's so interesting about that well we'll get into the books and i'll show you it and i'll try and keep it brief i promise but it's because this pulley is some of the very very early original like first generation as i call it components that were put on these early d2s early d3400 diesel engines when they first roll out factory doors. And a lot of these features didn't stick around for very long. And this pulley was one of them. You can see we have the 4B3426 casting number right here. So we have one pulley, 4B3426, pointing up to there, four serial numbers, 5J1 through 1421. So that is our serial number range for 1113. You can see we have a pulley and a standalone seal. Now, effective with serial number 5J1422, they redid that front seal with quite a dust shroud and they even did a new pulley. They changed it to a 7B2157, quite the design change there. Now we'll reference the 5J1422 number at which that new front crank seal came into play and you can see 1938 production went through 5J1262. So 39 picks up at 1263. So at the 1422 changeover, we're just less than 200 units into 1939 model year. Now the reason for that change can be found in the Selected Service Articles magazine. Once again, page 58, crankshaft front oil seal. The efficiency of the crankshaft front oil seal has been improved on the three and three quarter inch and four and a quarter inch bore engines. This has been accomplished on D3400 engines by adding a crankshaft pulley with a close fitting hub extending into a recess in the timing gear cover. Those changes didn't come about till much later than anything we've looked at today. But in other engines, a dust shield has been added to the seal. This is us now. This dust shield extends over the hub of the pulley to keep the fan from blowing dirt into the seal. And we have serial numbers at which these design changes came into effect. Uh, the new dust protection measures for the seal can be applied to engines built prior to the above serial numbers, which would be 1113. This may be advisable where dust conditions are severe. So the rework on D2 tractors, 5J1 to 5J1233, which is us, uh, having pulley 4B3426, that number right there, the new seal and shield assembly can be installed after reworking the pulley or by installing a new replacement, but why would you do that? When reworking the 4B3426 pulley, it will be necessary to machine the keyway boss on the hub to obtain dimension A. Okay, we got dimension A right here. We'll flip this over. Keyway boss on the hub right there. And it says on the three and three quarter inch bore engine, dimension A is two and five eighths inches. So measuring two and five eighths inches it looks like we take about an eighth of an inch off this boss so you would machine in about that far and remove that much material to create clearance for that new seal back to the book here and machine the bosses around the cap screw holes until they are flush with the rear face of the pulley flange so 
all of these threaded bosses would also be taken down flush with the face of this rear flange. As you can see, this pulley has not been reworked. We have the full keyway boss plus the full threaded bosses all the way around. So, early generation early pulley before the dust seal improvements has not been machined, has not been altered. Kind of a neat, uh, still intact first generation piece right there. So quickly here to finish up, machining the keyway boss provides clearance between the hub and the inside of the shield and machining the bosses on the pulley face gives lengthwise clearance for the shield. So that means that this updated front seal with the dust shield could be used in conjunction with this earlier first generation pulley if all the necessary machining had been done. And uh, looking back on it now, that's why I could not find this 1B5990 front seal through Caterpillar. Not available. Well, that's no surprise because it was uh, very quickly superseded by this uh, new design seal that had that dust shield. And that's the reason I had to go outside of CAT to the aftermarket to get that front seal. Um, if you don't remember that whole fiasco, I'll pop a card up uh, taking you back to the front cover installation video. It should be appearing in the corner about now. So go click on it. I dare you. So why did I spend so much time talking about a crankshaft pulley? Well, that's because it's one of those first generation pieces that survived. Um, you know, updated components were released to supersede these and to make it better, to make the seal perform better, to make the function better. But, you know, for mo the most part, 1113, I believe, was a fairly low hour machine and it just never really got any of the updates. And that's kind of what I like about it. It kind of lends to the cool factor to a tractor geek like me that can get into all these little minor detail parts and just analyze them, break them down, probably overthink them. You know, it's just part of what I like about this old machine. And it's kind of like this first generation dipstick with the old marks on it and the original uh, side cover for it. Um, you know, a question was uh, asked in the comment section under the oil pan video. Again, there's a card, go click on it, I dare you. Uh, he can relive all that again, but a question was posed as to whether or not this could be updated with the more uh, modern style engine running range on the gauge with the shrouded uh, tube and all that stuff. Yeah, it could be, but there's no need for it. And again, it's first generation, it's early, it's that detail stuff that I really like about 1113. So we're going to stay with the old non-shrouded seal, we're going to stay with the old dipstick, we're going to stay with the old pulley, and there's going to be a few other components coming up in the future videos that are first generation pieces, may not function as well or be as efficient as their redesigned counterparts, but I like that originality factor, so all that stuff's gonna stay. So for the install, we'll start by uh, positioning the key into the slot on the crankshaft. Make sure it's well seated. Position the pulley on next. And then the claw bolt. Once you get that tight, then the lock can go on, but first inch and 13 16 socket fits that very well. So you have the lock and it has this hex portion cut out of the center that is a little off center, off kilter with the rest of it. That is so you can have plenty of adjustability to try and find where it is going to line up with a couple of the threaded holes in that pulley. And this one's not going to line right now, but you can flip it over and that's going to give you a different angle. There we go. I think we can go like that and there we can get a bolt in there and a bolt in right there. So we'll secure that in place. And with the lock plate secured, that claw bolt cannot back out. Crank pulley installation is complete. All right, now we can put the radiator support on. And there is, there are 14 of these half by 13 bolts that hold this thing on um, all the way around here. Of course, it is uh, a structural component. Not only does the radiator perch way out there, but we have these uh, half by 13 threaded holes on each side for attachment points. Uh, I know the uh, the crankcase guards, the uh, skid plates, if you will, would attach to those areas on each side. Handy for putting lifting eyes, for slinging engines, whatever. So uh, they had to build quite a bit of support into this thing. Lots of gusseting on the backside. 
kind of another substantial piece of cast iron. Nothing fancy about this install, just set it in place and bolt it on. And that should conclude assembly on the front of this engine. Um, like I said, 11.13 is starting to gain weight. Quite the structural component there. It had a lot of high spots and a lot of old uh, dings in it from prior work. I think uh, someone had been using a chain to go around here to hook and lift in the past because there was a lot of high spots on both sides, in fact, in this area. I ended up taking it down, flattening them both off, but it fits well now. And uh, like I said, everything on the front end of the engine is good. So the last piece that uh, needs to go on before we can flip this is that large uh, blocky bell housing that goes back here. And here it is. I just pulled it out of cold storage. Next stop is going to be the heated shop. But lots of cleanup to be done on this um, because the bell housing was left open to the elements for years and years before we got 1113. There is a lot of a lot of rust and corrosion needs to be cleaned from the bottom down there. And I also have to really scrutinize the water passage that goes up to the starting engine, as well as the, tire, ah, the entire starting pinion clutch compartment for freeze cracks because they had the starting engine removed from 1113. Uh, we bought it that way. All of that filled up with water and it froze. And so we just need to make sure that oil compartment is very good and that water passage area is good and free from cracks. Really hoping it's gonna be uh, a nice casting because this is the best bell housing I have. In fact, still have the old corks and some of the unused threaded holes on the side there. Very, very neat. So it's gonna take a lot of work to get that bell housing cleaned, inspected, and ready to go onto the engine. I'm gonna start on that as soon as I shut the camera off here today. Uh, one other thing I want to address. I've had a lot of uh, questions in the comments section about paint on this thing and I hate to break it to you guys and it should be obvious by now 1113 is not getting any new paint and I've made up my mind I know what I want it to be I already have the mental image the picture in my head of what it's going to look like and honestly some tractors need paint and some don't 1113 is just one that struck me as just looking good the way it was and no amount of public shaming is going to is going to change my mind uh this is my project it's my machine it's my work, you know, so that's what it is. It's not going to get any paint. Um, I've done the paint thing on tractors before. They look nice. It's all well and good. But I just have so much more fun on the ones that you don't have to worry about. You don't have to be constantly cleaning them. You don't have to worry about dings and nicks and scratches. And honestly, paint doesn't make the smoke. Paint doesn't till the soil. Paint doesn't push the dirt. So, I mean, I've seen more tractors that look just perfect and pristine that couldn't complete a full parade lap. And I've seen some really nasty looking rusty ones that just run like a top. So, you know, the shine is all well and good, but it's not what makes me respect the machine. It's all about, you know, function and form. And like with 1113, keeping all those early build original aspects to it, that's what we're gonna do. So, sorry to break your heart, but you know, that's what it's gonna be. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope to see you back again. I want to get that bell housing on, get that thing right side up.